Okay, this is problem 9-20 on page 465. The plate has a thickness of a half inch and is made of steel having a specific weight of 490 pounds per cubic foot. Determine the horizontal and vertical components of reaction at pin A and the force in the cord at B. Do you know what symbol we always use for specific weight? Uh, one of the things that you'll probably be uh, a little bit perturbed at as you go through your coursework is the fact that, or your classes, it's like a the fact that swirly thing. You're right, right? The, the problem is from class to class, often different symbols are used for the same thing. And I think it's just to confuse students sometimes. Actually, it just depends on how the field was originally developed or the particular topic was originally developed. Usually that gives rise to certain symbols. But you're right, this is one of the ones that's pretty yeah. consistent. What do we call this? This is not a letter in our English is alphabet. It gamma? It is gamma. gamma comes from what Greek, what uh, I just said. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Greek letter gamma is almost, I've never seen anything else used. Maybe there are other symbols, but this one's really common. Now, it's pounds per cubic foot. So is that pounds mass or pounds force? Pounds mass. Pounds mass, mass per volume is known as density. Weight per volume is known as specific weight. Okay, so this is actually pounds force. Be careful. If it's pounds mass, we use another symbol. What is this called? Thank you for not saying P. I really appreciate it. I can't tell you how many students call this P. It's not P, this is Rho. I try to really enhance the back side of it with a, a big angle. To, yeah, this is Rho. And so Rho for this would be 490 pounds mass per cubic foot. And pounds mass and pounds force are two different things. Okay. As a matter of fact, how would we calculate uh, specific weight from density? We take density and multiply it by the acceleration of gravity. Okay? Yeah. That's all it is. So anyway, they gave us specific weight. We don't really need density in this problem. Let me sketch the particular system we're playing with today. And uh, let's see, I guess I'll... Go ahead and label it. You've got it there in your book, but in case you forgot your book, here we go. The shape of this curve on the right-hand side is y equals x squared by 3. So we can rearrange that, which is often useful in these problems. x equals root of 3y would also be the same thing, just a little bit of algebra. And we're supposed to find the tension b. And let me just go ahead and make this a free body diagram as well as our system diagram and add AX and AY into it. Now there's a three foot height here and three foot width. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. We're supposed to find the, well if we don't know the tension or if we don't know the weight of this body we can't find the tension can we? As a matter of fact, there's one more force that would belong on this body that I haven't drawn. What is it? It's the weight, right? Where do I put the weight? At the centroid. Where is the centroid? Ah, now that's the interesting question. I'm just going to pretend it's right there for the time being, okay? Now obviously it's, you know, if I were to add a coordinate system to this, I'd probably do something like this. There's my x and y coordinate. And so x bar represents the distance from the y-axis over to the centroid. And of course, y-bar is the height off the x-axis. Okay. I don't know where they are yet. I don't know what x-bar and y-bar are, but this is what I need. Now that, that diagram is getting a little messy. Let me draw it again over here and explain to you my strategy. The strategy is always the same in these problems. It really doesn't matter if you're talking about a line an area or a volume, the strategy is always the same. Oh, let's not forget the thickness of this plate, which would be end of the page, is one half inch. Anyway, the strategy is always the same, and that is to basically balance each individual part of the shape with the entire shape. Okay, so in this case, for example, I might look at, uh, I don't know, this little bit of area right here, this little bitty sliver. This sliver has a width dx, 
And what is its height? Well, we could calculate it because, look, the overall height from the x-axis is 3 feet. So wouldn't this be 3 feet minus y? Where y, of course, is a function of x. I say y of x. Right, because what is y? Well, y is how far it is from here to this point. That's what this tells us, right? You give me an x, you give me a position on the x-axis, I'll plug that x into this function and give you the y height. But that's the height from the x-axis up to here. I don't want that. I want the, the height of this. And then this little sliver of area here, you could call it dA, a differential amount of area, would be simply 3 minus y of x multiplied by dx. Now, I don't like using y of x because it makes me feel like I'm back in calculus class. I would rather just plug in what y of x really is. Well, that's easy. It's x squared over 3, isn't it? Because y equals x squared over 3. So we can make this look a little more friendly by just plugging in x squared over 3. And it's pretty obvious then. To find the location of the centroid, we'll have to add up all this area and the moment of all these. For example, the distance over to this particular sliver, sliver is whatever x position that I'm playing with at that moment, right? So the moment of that, that little sliver is different than the moment of the next little sliver, the one before. And of course, I'm going to balance that with the moment of the entire shape on the other side. The basic idea is always the same. That is that x, the, the x bar, the average position, or better, yeah, let's do it like this. x bar times the total area equals what? The integral of x, the particular x, and your book uses a, a tilde here, so the location of each individual sliver times the differential area at that sliver integrated over the whole, well, over the whole area, that's fine. What the heck does this symbol say? It's pretty easy. Add up the moment of each individual sliver, that should be equal to the moment of the entire area at the centroid of the area. You see what I'm saying? So if we want x bar, all we have to do is integrate the moment of each individual sliver and divide it by the total area. Now, of course, we can calculate the total area by integrating the differential areas over the entire area to find the, the magnitude of the area. That's fine. And so this is the equation that's given in your book. Now, for our particular case, I think we should expand this just a bit. I think what we ought to do, let's see, uh, if we expand this, we write uh, the integral over the x-coordinate, because I'm going to integrate it along the x-coordinate, times the particular x position that I find along the way times the differential area, but the differential area would be 3 minus x squared by 3 dx. So I'm going to integrate over the x-axis, so I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3 feet. You see that? Now I'm not done, because I also need to add up all of the area. So how do I do that? Well, that's easy. Just integrate over the whole area. So integrate from 0 to 3 along 3 minus x squared over 3 dx. You see? How did you get that original equation again to plug in for y? This one? Yeah. I realized that what I wanted was the height of the sliver. And that height is 3 feet minus y. Because all this is, you, you probably think of this as a function right now, right? It gives you a bunch of points. It, it defines the locus of every point on the line. Mm -hmm. Fine, that's true, but on the other hand, isn't it also a height, a particular height off of the x-axis? Because it's, it's just the y-coordinate, which is the height off the x-axis. Right? So that's how I got it. Does it make sense? Any questions? So I just took the overall height and subtracted off y, but y can be expressed as a function of x position. How did you get the x for the x times the 3 minus the pair, the parentheses? Here? Or here? Or here? Uh, on the top numerator, the x that's not surrounding the parentheses, yeah. how did you get that? It came from there because remember what I need to do is multiply the particular position of the differential area 
right, by that dimension. Because that's the moment of it. It's kind of, again, think of it as a, a balance point right here in the center, where the other side, what I'm doing is I'm saying that the particular centroid times the entire area needs to balance the effect of all these individual little areas. Does that make sense? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually, that's what integration means, is add up. So what I'm doing is taking the moment of every single sliver as we go from zero all the way over to three feet. So whatever's in the parentheses next to the x is essentially like a coefficient of the overall x value for whatever point it's at? Pretty much, yeah. So this is the height of the sliver, there's the width of the sliver, and there's the moment arm of the sliver. Good questions. Anything else? Your book uses this x tilde uh, nomenclature, which I think is okay because it's nice to differentiate, but it ultimately becomes just the position for a particular differential sliver. <coughs> These are good questions. Anything else? Okay. So what I did is I decided to integrate uh, the area first. You know what? It's, I don't really need that. You can help me with this. Let's integrate the area first, because that always happens. What's the total area? Oh, it's just the denominator. Integral from 0 to 3. 3 minus x squared by 3 dx. How do you integrate a constant? Good. It would just be 3x. 3x. Good. How do you integrate x squared? It would be... Add 1 to the numerator yeah. and then divide by the exponent. Yeah, minus... I'm sorry. Yeah. Minus so 1 ninth x cubed. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Because it would be 3 times 3. And so this needs to be evaluated from 0 to 3. Right? Those are the limits of integration. When I plug in zero, obviously the lower limit, the minus whatever, that's going to be zero, right? Because there's an x in both cases. But when I plug in the upper limit, what I will get is 3 times 3 minus 3 cubed by 9. And let's just make it clear, minus zero, right? For respect of the lower limit, just notice it's there. Okay. So this comes out to 9 minus, well, we can cancel two of those, so it's 9 minus 3, isn't it? But a 6 what? What are the units of this thing? You can tell. X has what units? Feet. DX has what units? Just be feet too. I wish they taught this in calculus. They don't teach you about units in calculus. They don't teach you about units in algebra either. Pet peeves here, sorry. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Dx is just a differential length on the x-axis. The x-axis has units of feet, so it's just a width in feet. Yeah. That's all it is. Even though it goes to zero, okay, it doesn't go. We take the limit as dx approaches zero. Between you and me as engineers, it goes to zero. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> it does. So even though it gets smaller and smaller, it still has units of feet. And so we end up with feet squared as our units. Okay. So that's the area. That's the area. Would you have known how to calculate the area of this body? Maybe, maybe not, but there it is. There's the area. So we could actually figure out the volume now because we could take this half inch thickness, calculate the volume, figure out the magnitude of the weight. Why don't we do that? That sounds interesting. It sounds like something we need because after all, we're going to need the moment of that weight. So let's calculate it. The weight is equal to... Uh, well, what? Well, gamma times the volume. But gamma times the volume would be area times thickness, right? And so all we need is 490, uh, sorry, pounds mass, no, pounds force, cubic foot times the area, which is 6 square feet, times the thickness, which is 1 half inch. Now, obviously, we've got some unit conversions to do because we lack the feet to all cancel, so there's what? One foot for 12 inches, right? So now all of the feet cancel, and we'll end up with the weight of the entire body. <coughs> when I did this, I got 122 and a half pounds. So let's just make a note over here that the weight is 122 and a half pounds. That's the result. Of 
plug that into your calculator. Okay? Questions so far? We doing okay? All right. So now, that was fun. Anytime we see this denominator, we know what to write, just six square feet. Now let's integrate the numerator. So let's see, the numerator is 0 to 3, x times 3 minus x squared over 3 quantity dx. How do we do this? Well, you we'll substitution. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're a masochist, sure. Well, why bother? Why not just distribute this? x cubed over 3 dx. And so integral, well, we don't need that anymore. Integrate this term, what do we get? 3x squared over 2. Pull the x one. So it's just x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 is the rule. Okay. How about the next one? x what? 4 over 12. Because 4 times 3 is 12. Okay. Good. And we need to evaluate this from 0 to 3. Again, the lower limit is going to give us a 0, but we'll write minus 0 just to note that we know what we're doing. So plug in 3. We'll have 3 times 3 squared by 2 minus uh, 3 to the 4th by 12 minus the 0. It should be to the power of 4, not 34. So, of course, they've set this problem up to make it easy for us to solve. 3 cubed by 2 minus... Uh, well, let's see, if we cancel one of the threes, we'd have 3 cubed over 4, right? So it's a half minus a quarter, which is just going to be a quarter, so 3 cubed by 4. Makes sense to everybody? Okay, and so the 3 cubed is what, 27 is in by 4? What are the units? Feet. Are they feet? See feet right there. Got to be careful because you might say, I see feet squared right there since it's x squared. But that doesn't make sense because remember, this whole term was something. In other words, this 3 and this 3 could all, both have units and they could be different units. All we were told is that y equals x squared over 3. And then what we did is we tried to calculate a height as 3 minus x squared over 3. This thing, this entire thing, has units of what? Feet. So this whole thing is feet, even though x itself has units of feet. This is where the units get a little confusing. So it's feet times feet times feet. Feet cubed. You well, might look at that and say, well, that's a volume. Nah, not really. It's more the moment of this entire area. Okay, It's not so much a volume. I guess technically, yes, it's the dimension of volume. And maybe there's some way of looking at this geometrically which makes a lot of sense. I don't know what that is. I think of this, as, even though it's cubic feet, as the moment of each of these individual little areas. Okay. So 27 by 4 cubic feet should be the result we get when we take, uh, well, that should be what we get when we multiply x bar by a, right? So now, we've got the number we want. Do moment arms of area have to have units of area? Or like Mo The moment arm has units of, well, has dimension of length, and the area, well, has units of area, so length squared. Mm -hmm. So the moment of area will always have units of length cubed. <coughs> Right, or dimension of length cubed. Because it's a distance times an area. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's a differential area or a whole area or what. It will always have length cubed dimension. So the number we got for the numerator was, what, 27 over 4? And the number we got for the denominator was 6 square feet. And so what we'll do is cancel all the feet except for 1. That'll give us units of length for x bar. Okay. So this is, what, 4, 6 is 24, so this is 27 over 24. How can you have cubic feet if you're just working in two dimensions? Because it's still, because you're thinking that cubic feet have to mean something geometrically. 
and it doesn't mean anything geometrically here. Maybe there's a way to make a plot of it in three dimensions, and it would be some kind of volume that would make sense if we drew I don't know. Never tried drawing it. Probably should. But we don't have cubic feet that mean anything in particular to this diagram, except for that it's the moment of an area. Okay? All right, so 27 over 24 feet should be what we get. What did I get for x bar? 1.125 feet. Does that make sense? That's right. And so what I've just determined is that this distance, well, I guess I can leave it in there, is one and an eighth feet. That's how far over the centroid of the weight is. How far up is the centroid of the weight? Sometimes you don't care. Do we really care for this problem? What were we asked to find? We were asked to find some forces, weren't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, the forces have gotten kind of lost. Let me uh, put them in a different color. AX, AY, W, and the tension from point B. Will I care how far up the centroid is? Maybe. Let's find out. Let's see. We don't need this uh, thickness or specific weight anymore. And I think we know what the coordinate system is. Let's stick the statics in over here. How would I find the tension in point B? Well, I would have to sum moments, say about point A, counterclockwise positive. All right. So if we sum moments about point A, A, X, A, Y are gone. T, B will be there and weight will be there. So we'll have minus x bar w, now I know where it's at, that's a good thing, right? And plus tb times 3 foot, because that's how far away a and b are. And so the tension at point b would be x bar w over 3 feet, 1.125 feet over 3 times the weight, which is what, 122 and a half, I think? Let me get rid of my ghost uh, shape over here. I don't need it anymore. And so from this, I should be able to calculate the tension in the rope. I'm um, sorry for the messy writing. Let me try again. I was running out of space. 122 and a half pounds force. So when I did this, I found that the tension was uh, 45.94 eh, pounds force. I rounded this off for you. I, I left it with four significant figures. I should have done that, but there we go. So almost 46 pounds is how much force has to exist in that rope. Well, so far I haven't needed a Y bar. We're doing okay. But I would like to get, for example, AX. Well, that's pretty easy to see. You know what AX is? TB. TB. So why? How do you know that? So is x equals 0, exactly. So ax is equal to tb equals 45.94 or so pounds. Similarly, ay is what? The weight from some forces in y. So that's what, 122 and a half pounds? We didn't have to find y bar. Did they ask us to find y bar? No. No, but you know me, don't you? Okay. We're going to find y bar. Why? Because it's fun. That's why. You yeah. need the practice. Well, what are we going to do to find y bar? Well, what we're going to do is pretty much the opposite of what we've done so far. I'll show you. We're going to take a differential area that is a different differential area. Help me out a little bit more this time. What's the height of this differential area? We're going to let this go to zero, so we would call it dy. dy. Good. What's the length of this differential area? Dx. It's not dx. It's not a differential length. What's on the right? 3 minus the square root of 3y. 3 minus y, y square root of no, it's, it's flipped, flipped, isn't it? It's flipped. So which equation should we use? I think I'm interested in x, right? Notice that what this equation does is it tells me, give me a y 
And I'll tell you how far over x should be. So isn't this just root 3y? Isn't that the distance? So when I, now, now, here's something that's important. We're often interested in the centroid of this little shape. And this little shape is easy to find the centroid of. It's in the middle. So the location, if I really wanted it, let me put this up high. I don't think we really need it for this problem. But, what was this, root 3y, I think, something like that. If I wanted the location of the centroid of this, in fact, yeah, there's two dimensions to be concerned with. This one's easy. It's up at y. Right? But over here, I'd want to measure it off of the x-axis. So what would that be? Well, in this particular case, it would be root 3y over 2, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay. Now, which one do I really want? Well, I don't know. Let's ask the equation and find out. I want to find y bar. I want to find the centroid of the entire area. Now, notice that's going to be a, a height like I've drawn it here. The way you do that is by, well, I don't know. Tell me what to write. What do I put in the denominator? Remember what we're doing is taking the moment of several different small areas and comparing it to the moment of the overall area. Maybe I should write it that way. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> <laughs> This is the moment of the entire area. About what? About the x-axis. Look where my ghost shape ends up this time. And you know where the balance is? The balance point's right there. See what we're doing now? We're looking at a balance this way. Because now we've got all these differential areas to integrate from y equals 0 to y equals 3. And if I find the exact location y bar of the centroid, the area times that location would balance out the area of all these differential, I'm sorry, the moment of all these differential areas. So here's the balance, here's the moment on one side. Help me write the moment on the other side. How would I do that? I'll need to add up from 0 to 3 along the y-axis the moment of each of the differential areas. So y tilde? So y tilde, the location of the centroid of the particular area, times dA. Good. Now let's expand it. Well, for each of the areas, y tilde is simply going to be y, isn't it? How would I write down the differential area? Square root of square root of 3y. Root of 3y times? Times dy. dy. I'm looking at the area of a little bitty rectangle. A rectangle that hardly has any height. Right? That's it. So if you want y bar, just solve for it. Integral 0 to 3, y root 3y, dy by a. Of course, we could write this a in a complicated way. If we really wanted to, right? We could write it like 0 to 3 dA. But why do that? We've already figured out what that area is. It's the same area whether you integrate it this way or this way. It doesn't make any sense. But the moment of the area is different, depending on which way you integrate it. So this, we already know, we're going to write in, what, six square feet for that? That's easy. Help me integrate this other mess. So let's integrate from 0 to 3. Well, what should I do first here? Any ideas? Plug in your calculator. Plug in what? Plug it into your calculator. <laughs> you could. <laughs> that would be fine. Let's do it manually. I'd rewrite the square root. Well, we could pull out the root 3, y, square root of y. I wouldn't do it that way. What would you do? I'd write y times 3, y to 1 half. I wouldn't do it that way. Any other ideas? Simplify it. Yes. Is there another way we can write this? Y, y to the 1 half. One Good. Half, yeah. So it would just be... Is there another way to write this? What are those? So what do we do to combine these two? Add them together. Add what together? The, the exponents. The exponents. So this is y to the 1.5. Yeah. Or 3 halves, whatever you want to call it. Okay? <laughs> dy. That makes it a whole lot easier because now this is just x to the n dx, just like we had before. Because look, this 
root 3 comes out, it's just a constant. That's right. And now we'll have y to the 1.5. How do we integrate that again? What do we do? y to what? This two exponent divided by 2.5. To the 2.5 over 2.5. Evaluate it from 0 to 3. That's it. Okay. So, some of you are racing me on your calculator. Did you already get a number? I got yeah. 10.799. Let's see if I get the same thing. So we've got 3 to the 2.5 over 2.5 minus 0, because when we plug in a 0, it's going to just go to 0. It doesn't always happen. Be careful about just throwing away the lower limit. That's why I keep writing this minus 0, because I'm thinking of plugging it in here and thinking to myself, do I get 0 out of this or not? If I get 0 out of this, I'll go ahead and just write a 0. Sometimes you don't, so yeah. be careful. Anyway, does this come out to whatever it was that you said? I think some of you did it by integration, but verify that this comes out to, uh, you know, that's a, no, I do have it. I got 10.8. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? Close to me, yeah. Okay. So I actually did this numerically, and I think if you take 3 to the 2.5 or 2.5 times root 3, I think you'll actually get it, because think about it, this is 3 to the half, isn't it? Right, so if it's 3 to the half, what do we do again? Add the exponents. So that's 3 cubed, right, over 2.5. So this is the same thing as 27 over 2.5. So anyway, 10.8, 10.8 .8 what? The units? What are the units? Now it seems a little confusing, doesn't it? Because we've got eq a length to the half power. Mm -hmm. But what did we mean by that root 3y? Feet. We meant feet. Mm -hmm. This whole thing is just feet. Another way to look at this is that if you think of y as having units of feet, then think of the 3 as having units of feet also. That way you end up with feet squared, square root, you get feet. Okay? If you like that, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. The whole thing is just feet. So feet times feet times feet. Again, we have cubic feet. Now let's go back to our original equation. We're taking care of the calculus, it's 10.8 cubic feet, and let's plug in our results. Y bar equals 10.8 cubic feet divided by 6 square feet. Again, all the feet but 1 in the numerator cancel, and we end up with 1.8 feet. So the location of the centroid is at 1.8. They didn't ask for it, but we just wanted to prove that we could do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Couldn't you do just x bar equals root 3y over 2? You said x bar. Let's and then be careful. You're talking, about, for you're talking about y bar or you're talking about x bar? Solving for y bar because we already have x bar. Okay, so you're suggesting y bar, bar equals what? No, x bar equals... I'm uh, sorry. x bar equals what? Uh, root 3y over 2 since it's like halfway. The halfway point. Can you just do that and solve for y? Well, so you're saying take this. Basically, what you're saying is, is it true that y bar equals x bar squared over three? Yeah. Well, that represents points on these lines. Do you think that the center of gravity of this whole shape will be on this line somewhere? No. Well, I mean, I, so you have your one uh, dy up there, right? And you said the halfway point was root three y over two. I was suggesting you could do that that way, and I got I got 1.7. That's wrong. <laughs> Is it, but did you round it to 10.8? I did not. That's exact. Okay, never mind. That's a good question. You got to be careful with that. Number one, when I went back to this, you immediately saw no. I know intuitively it's not on that line, so that wouldn't be true, right? That this would not work. But this isn't that the same thing? Because look, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Uh, I think where the problem lies, because you're looking at the dy as if it could simply be y, it isn't because notice that its length changes as we go. So that's just a height. You've got to go through the calculus, unfortunately. There's no shortcut. Any other questions? These are good questions. All right.